In May 2010, a geological field trip was organized by the leading geologists of South Africa and Swaziland in order to study the processes that formed crustal rocks during the early Archean. This is a very interesting expedition which is made out of uh, uh, renowned, well-renowned geologic scientists. They've come to look at some of the oldest rock assemblages that we have in the country. And uh, it is very interesting in the sense that uh, uh, Swaziland happens to have some of the oldest rocks known to mankind. You have the rocks preserved and you can sample them, you can study them in the field, and you have good exposures, and uh, yeah, it's easy to do the field work. The Archean Eon covers the time period between 3.8 and 2.5 billion years ago. During this time, two major events took place. Life on Earth began, and the cooling of the Earth led to the formation of continental crust. The earliest life was microbial. This, the kind of microbes that I'm looking at is the sulfur-using microbes, so sulfate-reducing bacteria. So those kind of bacteria, they don't need oxygen, uh, which wasn't, it, it wasn't available in the Archean. So they, what they do is they use sulfate and they reduce that to sulfide, and that's where they get their energy from. So similar to, like, we use oxygen to breathe, they use sulfate to breathe, you could say. Many techniques can be used to study the ancient Earth, and the geochemistry of special elements within the rocks is one way. There are many elements, and there are some special elements that are called trace elements. And these elements are so peculiar because they go in certain mineral, but they don't go in others. So studying special mineral, one can even determine the age of the Earth, or one can determine from where the rock come, if the rock come from deep, from the mantle, or it come from something superficial, or simply to see when the rock was metamorphosed. When the rock became from a sediment, it became to a granite. So it's very fascinating because geochemistry, geochemistry gives uh, the opportunity to apply te technique to any kind of geology. Okay, now here we're at a location just north of the town of Pix Peak in Swaziland, where we have a banded gneiss which is dated at 3.644 billion years, which is currently the oldest rock in the African continent. It's part of the ancient gneiss complex and it's intruded by, by granite veins which are themselves 3.1 billion years old. So we're continuing now to look at uh, the greenstone belts and the various rocks associated with these uh, fantastic ancient uh, formations from the uh, Archean period. These rocks are all somewhere between 3 and 3.5 billion years old. So it's really quite a remarkable uh, opportunity to see some of the really oldest rocks on Earth. We are looking into the origin of granitic rocks. So we, we are concerned with the uh, origin of the first felsic granitic continental crust. So we, see, we look into the issue from where are these felsic granitic rocks? What are the sources? Yes. Some people like to see a subduction zone for the felsic material. Others, others think of melting of, uh, fels of mafic crust, oceanic plateaus. So these are the opposing uh, hypotheses on this issue. I mean, we have this nice concept of plate tectonics, so we would like to apply it to the Archean as well, but my opinion is there's no, no uh, field evidence and no chemical evidence that it ever was active or that it uh, is a valid model for the very early Archean, the Hadean times. You know, there's this big argument that there is no high-pressure rocks in the Archean, therefore we have no plate tectonics. But this group seems to demonstrate that this is possible to discover. Very difficult to find because this is overprinted to some extent by this strong 3.2 billion year event. People like to make these end member statements because it sounds really fancy, but really, I mean, early Earth was bound to be an extremely heterogeneous and dynamic place with crust forming in different environments, just as it is today. You've got Hawaii or you've got Iceland, and then you've got the Ring of Fire with subduction zones. And, you know, I, I think there's very good evidence that there's actually formation of Archean crust in, in two very different regimes, one with upwelling mantle forming these thick plateaus that are then undergoing the melting and the overturn, and then there are other pieces of crust that have very good evidence for subduction and accretion of different trains, like in western Greenland. Very difficult to actually map the expedition that we have right now are people who have come to uh, you know, uh, study 
uh, the evolution of the Earth's crust because we've got some of the oldest rocks. And then if you do a proper you know, analysis and study of that, it may lead you to finding out as to how these rocks were concentrated and then how minerals were actually in place in the, in the rocks themselves. And then it may just happen to lead you to the formations. Southern Africa is the perfect place to study the birth of the Earth's continental crust. For now, the debate will continue whether plate tectonic processes were operating in the Archean. Field and laboratory studies will eventually solve this problem. The fantastic geology of South Africa and Swaziland hold the key to resolving this debate.